What I'm going to show here is what I consider to be my next to final uh, approach to growing microgreens for live delivery at restaurants and other large customers. I'm using my stainless steel pans. The first layer in this system is a piece of unbleached muslin which has been washed because I think there is sizing or something in those things. And I'm going to cover the bottom of the tray with this. The idea is that the roots from the microgreens will grow down into this medium and really saturate it so that there will be a dense mat of roots. You get dense roots anyway, but the idea here is that there's going to be something very strong at the bottom that they can put their hooks into so that this whole thing can be lifted out and put into another pan at the destination or even just lift it out for easier harvesting down to the bottom. So I just had some patches to cover the end here. The next part is going to be a wicking material. I have tried using some cotton sash cord. I don't think that's very effective. It would be biodegradable, which I prefer, but this polyester cable cord with um, a braided top is working very well outdoors and so I'm going to use it in this particular installation as well. I'm going to cut a piece that is as long as the pan and another oh, 10 inches or so outside the pan to hang down into the reservoir. Okay, that's that. So you see this rope is somewhat stiffer than some other things I might use but that's probably okay. The next thing is to lay down uh, two layers of these unbleached paper towels which um, are very structurally weak. They will break apart. The roots will penetrate with no problems. So you see the wick basically coming out the end, the side, something like that so it can be put in a reservoir. This also is going to get primed. Like I said, it seems to pay to prime the pump. If you just put dry paper towels down and hope that the wick will saturate them in, in some kind of period of time, it just doesn't happen. So this seems to be the best approach to doing this. The wick will quickly pick up water and after you know a day or so if you touch this wick on the surface you're going to feel it, that it's wet so it's quite saturated on the inside and it will go down uh, all the way. So the seeds for this are 8 ounces of pea seeds from True Leaf. That seems to be a good amount to cover and the brown water is due to the fact that I added some liquid seaweed to the soaking mix per Harley Smith of NPK University as a way to enhance the growth. I'm going to save this water of course and put it on my garden so as to not waste the seaweed which is somewhat expensive. I arrived at this amount of seeds by basically covering the bottom of this stainless pan with about halfway with one layer of these pea seeds. So that's eight ounces. It turned out to be about eight ounces. So the idea is that we're going to cover the whole pan with um, a nice layer of seeds. It looks like it's pretty well on its way to that. Spread them all out. I want them one layer deep. I've had pretty good luck germination wise with these true leaf seeds. I also got sunflower seeds from them which are germinating quite well. So there's different motivations for doing this. It's complex, my own need to make a living, but on a macro level, you know, we are seeing more and more damage to crops all over the world, so it's becoming more and more necessary for just about anybody who can to uh, grow some food for themselves, but also for the market. Um, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, which consumes six million tons of food per year. Not all of that is produce, but you know, that's a lot of food for a lot of people. Whenever I ride around the subway or on the freeway or anywhere and on anywhere around town, I'm always saying opportunity as far as the eye can see, folks. I think that's what it is. So it's kind of a happy and sad causes, but you know, I think in terms of the grand solar minimum, it's not like you can go off into the woods with a pile of food and a bunch of guns and uh do well for yourself. It's it's really got to be a group effort in spite of certain bad issues like inequity and so on. That's where I'm going to stop with this. So at this point this tray is ready to go on to a germination pad at about 70 degrees or so. 
in a few days. Uh, these are going to be sprouting nicely and I will put them under my 6500 degree Kelvin uh, fluorescent lights to grow. I might just mention that I also have a small tray of peas outside in the alley between our house and the neighbor's house to see about you know growing growing sprouts outdoors in the Bay Area as well at least during the summer we always have kind of cool weather it's the Mediterranean climate but uh, you know it's, it's for cool season crops like peas growing outdoors is probably a good option if you have a way to do it